entire the scheme, the system of general semantics talk about how we think. It raises the question on about ourselves, our own thinking, and it tries to it tries to guide us for how sensible thinking is possible and how that sensible thinking will make it easier for us to really to really act as human beings. said that to understand art it is necessary to know the artist to understand a play it is necessary to know the play writer so same a very brief about alfred korzybski he was born in uh, uh, poland which was at that time in 1879 which was under russia at that time and he belonged to a family of uh, a nobleman now this uh, alfred korzybski by training was a chemical engineer and he joined in about 19, uh, 1914, he joined Russian army to be a part of the First World War. Now when he took part in the First World War and observed destruction, chaos and conflict all around him, and which led to question in his mind that how could this have been done? Why this war and why this why this chaos and destruction and violence? And he started pondering on this particular question. By the end of World War, he was transferred to United States as a war lecturer, where he started giving lectures on war and the ideas which he, is, uh, he was uh, thinking about. And he saw that so many achievements, so many good things which human beings have done, so many buildings and infrastructure and roads and vehicles, so much of prosperity. He again came across the same question, that how could this have been done? So he realized that human beings are capable of doing two completely, uh, completely opposite things. On one side, absolute destruction. On one side, there is very much creative construction. Now how this is possible, how a human being can do these completely two opposite things at the same time. He realized another thing, that the science and technology is developing very fast on one side, but is society ready to handle that progress in science and technology? Why on one side society is uh, completely broken by beliefs, traditions, customs, which are age old, which are unscientific in nature, doesn't have any very empirical meaning in that. And on the other side, we find developments in science and technology. So we found that the physical sciences, the natural sciences are growing exponentially, while the growth in society is very much arithmetic. So why is the gap between how the science is developing and how the society is developing? So he understood that man is becoming more unseen day by day that the insanity is taking over the sanity of human beings and which is actually a self-destructive because it is destructing the, in the human race, it's destructing the humankind. And so he was very much related or he was very much keen to understand uh, that why and what is wrong with this and how can this be prevented. This is the Korzybski's quest, that why humanity is suffering, what's the problem with it and how we can you know, we can save humanity from insanity and bring humanity to sanity. That's the whole idea which Korzybski was pondering, with which he raised another question. What makes us humans? He said that plants are plants because they can bind chemicals. Right? Animals are animals because they can bind space, because they can move around, plants cannot. And human beings are human beings not because they have evolved brain and all, but because they can bind time. This is the fundamental idea of general semantics. That human beings are time binders, by which I mean that humans have the capacity to transmit from one generation to another generation. Right? Wherever the earlier generation has left off, we pick a thread from there and we continue the journey. By time binder, we mean that Nothing belongs to us, right? 
we are not self made everything is not created by us something is created by our forefathers ancestors and we are building upon that the question is are we efficient time binders because concepts we connect us straight away with this humans are time binders right we are not time we are not binding time efficiently and that's the reason why we are moving towards this insanity that is why we are moving more behaving like animal like because we are less than human because we are forgetting to bind time which is a unique feature of uh, uh, of the identity of being human and therefore he said that humanity is in its childhood i hope you are understanding from ages right human beings were behaving like an animal and therefore humanity was in a in a childhood that's what kozlovsky thought in early 20th century and uh, so he thought of thought that how this humanity can be uh, you know can be developed further okay to what we call as what he called as the manhood of humanity which was his first book released in 19 published in 1929 now the name itself suggest that he was talking about how this humanity can be brought from childhood to manhood how human beings can be made saner you know than what they are today so there are two questions now logically comes first how do we experience that then becomes information knowledge etc which then we transmit so you are standing on a road and you saw an accident so how do you experience that accident as a viewer and when after 2 hours when you go home how you describe narrate that accident to your family member or a friend so that you are transmitting it something has happened at in time a and in time b you are giving that narration to someone these two things according to korzybski are extremely important to understand to know what time binding is and how efficient time binding is possible and therefore in science and sanity which is known as the bible for general semantist uh, people which was published in 19 1933 where he actually talks about the entire full fledged system of general semantics where he wrote that we are interested in humanity to know how we know even than what we know now while understanding that korzybski said that we are actually a part of the process world there are two kind of worlds one is the world out there world which is outside of me and world which is inside of me so you can see that that earth represents the outside world the absolute reality as it is existing now you can see there is a human figure and which is absorbing the reality external reality how it is done it is done through senses through our sense organs right so we see we hear you know we smell we feel we touch and through all this sense organ we try to experience the things we try to experience the reality and through when we experience that reality we construct our own world the way we have experienced it the same accident is seen by say five people but if you hear their narration you will find that they are giving different narrations these five people the reality is same but they have absorbed it experienced it differently right which leads to creation of two worlds world out there and world here in my brain right which is creating meaning out of it no meaning out of what my sense organs are sensing is it that what i hear see smell feel is out there i can see a ro- i can see a rose a rose is red that rose is red in my conception is it really that the rose is red that's the question in the first point is it that whatever i see is actually out there then we understand that is not so is the light that goes on that flower comes back to my retina and then my retina creates a picture and i understand that it is red there may be a person who is color blind for him that flower may be green may not be red so the rose is red becomes my reality which is different from the reality of some other person because he is experiencing it completely different so the in reality the rose is red is the reality for me but it's not the reality which is actually out there do i hear see smell feel all that is out there 
So whenever we see, it's not that we see and absorb everything. Right? Whenever we hear, we don't hear everything. This tells us that the capacity of our sense organs are absolutely limited and how limited they are vary from person to person. Because the, the, the way the brain functions is such that brain cannot experience what we call sub-microscopic events. Right? This is a bottle. You can see that this bottle is stationary. It's static. Right? But at sub-microscopic level, there are so many things which are happening. Right? There are atoms and nuclei which is moving. Okay? So this bottle is actually very dynamic. It's not at all static. But we cannot see that. Right? And therefore we feel that the bottle is very stationary. What brain does is brain just takes a snapshot with the help of all our sense organs. Right? Because brain is not in a position to understand the whole process world as process. Getting my point. So when you see an object, you see an object as a static entity. You don't understand that object as process. But understand that this particular part, which we call the cerebral cortex, which has got these two hemispheres, right, right and left. And as you know, that is a two completely separate hemisphere. And there is one, there are two very, uh, one very important organ just in the center, which you can see called as thalamus. Now this thalamus is the organ which receives signals from all our sense organs clear and those re signals received are transmitted to the cortex which is the largest part of the brain okay and in the cortex you find that all that signals that we receive are processed and the entire work of giving meaning is done there but the entire concept of consciousness language creativity aesthetic all which is processed there in the cortex, the signal goes from thalamus. The research has shown that there is a time lag. There is a time that takes to complete this process. Okay. Now this time actually leads to what we call as the thalamocortical disintegration. It tells us that human senses are limited. Okay. Brain has a limited capacity to process the things. Right? We don't see everything. We don't experience everything which is out there. So what we are doing, when we look at, when I'm looking at you, I'm only looking at the chairs or I'm only looking at you. But there are so many chairs which are empty. I'm not looking at them. Right? I'm looking at them, but those are not getting registered in my brain. I'm only looking at you people who are listening to me. So what I'm doing, I'm actually removing certain part. Right? I'm deleting certain part, I'm ignoring certain part, certain portion from the reality, from outside world. This process, Korzybski called abstracting, another fundamental principle. And we, everybody, we are abstracting, we cannot escape from that. So there is the real world, which is the world out there, right? That real world we absorb through senses, okay? We carry out, we do the abstracting part, experiencing part, and how we transmit that experience through language. Here comes the semantic component. To understand this better, Korzybski made a kind of a model that has structural differential. You can see that this model has six parts, and actually it continues. You can see the sixth part is broken, so that is just to show the continuity. The topmost part is actually what we call as a parabola. It's a very coarse kind of material. So it has got number of holes. Korzybski said that this parabola represents the world. He calls that level as the event level. Right? There's so many events taking place at macroscopic and sub-microscopic levels also. So each and every hole in that parabola represents each and every event, what is happening around. Event level, remember, there are no words. There is no language. Everything is non-verbal, right? Because just world is out there. I don't know about all that. So it's absolutely in a non-verbal format. When I see something, then I enter into object level. I see something, my eyes catches something or my ear hear something. So that is the first interaction with the world. 
right which is also which is called as object level now this is also a very non verbal interaction because i'm just seeing it i'm not creating any meaning i'm not thinking about it it's the first interaction between say a light and the retina with which i can see so which called is called as uh, object level now can you see that there are certain strings and there are some strings from event level to object level which is which are connected to each other so these are the things these are the events which you can grasp say those events which are connected are all of you as far as i am concerned because i am seeing you right but i am not seeing those empty chairs clear right so all those empty chairs are, are like those dots which are not connected by any string so i am leaving out those details right but the empty chairs do exist but i am leaving out those details i am abstracting i am only seeing whatever i want to see rather okay and that is what an object level right and i can see through my senses so the last word says sensory impact okay and certain words a certain uh, strings you can see are freely hanging from the parabola they are not getting connected to the object level right okay so again these are the things which i cannot grasp no i cannot grasp grasp through my senses so though you can see that there is no connection between the parabola and the object level the third level the third level is called as the descriptive level i have sensed it and now i am describing it this is the first verbal interaction with the world okay now remember verbal doesn't mean only when i describe when i start thinking i am entering into a verbal world so i started thinking about something that i have seen so with the thinking begins i am entering into a verbal world because i think in my language right so uh, that become the level of description and here the the process of evaluation begins so actually the information is processed right uh, in at uh, in the level d next level which i say that these are infinite levels which are called by korzybski as i1 i2 say up to in so that i stands for the inferences so the inferences i draw you know from that clear yeah? something which may not be the reality i may not know whether i am not, i am not i have not proved it empirically but i have inferred that that this this and this thing is like that okay so that is my inference okay. and those the number of cards i1 i2 i3 shows that the same thing is uh, abstracted at different levels you can see the arrow which shows that increasing abstraction levels right more the number of levels higher is the abstraction i see a cow then i think yes cow can give milk so i categorize cow as a milking animal then i think yes cow is a milking animal is something to be domesticated so cow becomes a part of livestock are you understanding what i'm giving i'm giving labels to that okay if it is a livestock then we say okay it's a wealth for a farmer the person who is doing livestock cow is a wealth okay so at every level i'm abstracting so korzybski is showing a, 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 a kind of a dangerous sign that higher the abstraction okay you will be you will be further away from the reality okay the arrows are important arrow show that this side arrow which goes back to parabola which shows a feedback or it shows the factor of time okay because whatever i have experienced that finally affects my own experience next time so the inferences that i have drawn before are influencing my experience in future are you understanding that okay certain beliefs right that a particular thing is like that right uh, a person a is lazy this is my belief i have experienced it when i gave person a some work right but when the time comes next time to give some work to a i am giving the work thinking that the person is lazy but a person may do that work efficiently this time there may be some reason why he was lazy earlier right but i don't do that i keep that uh, inference in my mind you no know, which uh, affects the experience so these are the four levels something happens clear event level i sense what happens object level both these levels are non verbal i recognize what happens this is the first verbal understanding of the world i generate meaning for what happens 
something happens is not what I have sensed. Understood? Whatever is there in the outside world is not all that I have sensed. I have only picked up something. Okay? Now whatever I have sensed is not what I recognize because I may not recognize everything. Right? Because I have not experienced it before. So certain things I may not recognize. Whatever you recognize okay, is not the meaning because meaning goes through number of filters. Are you understanding how you go away from the level one? From whatever is there outside and how the meanings are generated in that. This is called a structural differential. Okay, this is what the structure of experience is. No, not experience, structure of experiencing is. How we experience structure. One, two, three, four. Okay, and every level differentiates from the other level, you no, know, creating the gaps. Okay, in experiences. This is the first question. Now the last second question. How we transmit? So first of all, we have experienced something limited. We have grasped something very limited. Okay. And on the basis of filters, we have created some meanings, our own world. Okay. Now how I will transmit that to the other person?